girls, be nice. Be nice. What? What was that? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Where's Sweepy? Sweepy! <gasps> what? There she is. Let her over here to say hi to me. Hey, Sweepy. Hey, you're getting so tall, sweet girl. You're getting so tall. You big girl. You want food, huh? I'll feed you now. Woo! Look at those aerobatics. <laughs> shy. Shy, shy. Hi. Oh my goodness, I love you guys so much. Spring is trying to come early in Georgia. By a couple of months. This weather is insane. It is 70 degrees out here. I'm sweating in a three quarter sleep shirt. Like, sweating. I should have worn a tank top. Um, the forecast even has 79 degrees for this week. 79 degrees, y'all. It's February. I mean, I know we live in Georgia. We live in the South. But it's not usually like this. This can be very good and it can be very bad. For us humans, we love it. We're enjoying soaking up the rays. I think the goats enjoy it for the most part too. But there are some complications involved in this warm, warm weather in the middle of winter. I'm looking around. I've seen a couple of clumps of poop that are more like a dog poop texture. Clumpy, not in pellets. I don't see any dirty bums to be able to tell who it's coming from. So it's not severe diarrhea. But the minute I see clumpy poop, I think parasites. With this extreme warm up, parasites have a chance to hatch and overcome the herd. So everybody's getting triple herbs and we're staying on top of it preventatively so that we won't have to turn to dewormers later in the season if it becomes a problem. Kitty is due March 7th and she's already begun to have her udder fill out a little bit. And you can tell her belly is big. So she'll be the first one due. She's bred with fluff and udder. So it'll be another new pine cross, which will be super cute. And it will be fluff and udder's first offspring. So if she has a doe, we will keep one doe at least to see what he does and to see what her combination is. Kitty is one of my best milkers. So keeping her does has always been kind of part, part of the plan anyway. That's why we have Truly. And then this girl right here, Sister Ray, she's one of our, of our other heavy milkers. So that's why we kept her little girl, Dottie. So we'll see. I'm hoping that Daisy and Fancy Girl are bred as well. So I'll have to look at my calendar and see what I have for that. I think there was somebody else that we ended up breeding. Maybe one of the younger ones. Precious was it? I don't know. I, I have to look at my notes. I, I can barely remember my own name most days due to my thyroid condition. So it's uh it's good to keep notes. Rosemary, never even bred, but she's Look at her, she's huge. She tricked us. She really, 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 really tricked us. <sighs> so I gotta figure out if she's able to be bred. You guys are spilling your hay, that is not healthy. You do not want your hay on the ground. Goofy goats. I am always super vigilant that they are not eating food off of the ground because the ground is where the parasites live and the parasites can crawl up onto the food and be ingested into their mouth that way. So this momentary touch on the ground while they're mowing down and fighting over food is hopefully not long enough for that to happen.
So what does a heat wave mean for the animals and plants? It's actually not that good for them. They look like they were starting to shed their winter coats. They're not supposed to do that yet. We're gonna get cold again. I promise you, we will get cold again. Probably down into the 20s, possibly even teens. It can even cause some issues for wildlife as turtles and other aquatic animals start to become active thinking it's spring. They could even begin mating and laying eggs in the hopes of raising a clutch before it gets cold again. But that is not good for them. It stresses out their bodies and usually doesn't result in good results. Spring peepers might have enough time to produce new offspring in this short time burst, but there aren't many wildlife that can keep up with such a quick pace, short period of warm weather. So it is so hot in Georgia that the mealyworms living in my barn came out of hibernation. I don't know if you can tell, but they are crawling. So I fed them some quail food, because that's what I had out here. It's grain based and it's high protein, so that should work because with them waking up, they're gonna wanna eat. We've got all different stages. We've got some beetle, we got some beetle activity there. There's a pupa there. And of course the worm stage. I should feed some of this to my quail. That's a little pupa. I'll put that guy back so he can become a beetle. These things are really cool. Alright boys. These are the boys we're fattening up. Let's see what they think. This one's got the right idea, but not even going after the moving worms. Let's see if somebody else notices the movement. Yep, we gotta, oh, no, they don't know what to think. They're each taking turns going in there, but it doesn't seem like they're going after the worms. Somebody get excited about the worms in your bowl. <laughs> but we'll see, if they're gone later, we'll know they like them. These fig cuttings are budding up, trying their best to open, which is not a good thing. Even my blueberry cuttings are trying to form flower buds. We don't want them to wake up yet, so this is kind of scary. After this, if these plants open up, I have to keep them in a protected area for the rest of the winter, rather than leaving them out here to root properly. They're gonna have to be babied and coddled which, as you guys know, I try to do things the easy way, not the hard way. So this is kind of risky. I uncovered our permaculture fruit bed and let it get some beautiful sunshine and allow all of these edible weeds to provide nectar for Whatever honeybees are out and about foraging because of the warm temperatures, the honeybees are greatly affected by this warm weather. Strawberries are blooming. Strawberries can't set fruit without the honeybees, so I guess it's warm enough for both of them. But as that plant puts all that energy into that bloom and trying to produce fruit, if we get that far, they are going to be putting energy that should be used for winter stores in the root system. So again, not good. As exciting as it might be for us humans, it's really not good for the animals and the plants. I want you guys to have vision with me right now. I try to imagine things in my mind like a picture, like a storybook of how things are gonna be, how I want them to be. And it usually helps making it come to fruition. So I want you guys to dream with me. What you see here and here 
our baby kiwi vines they're hardy kiwi vines so what we're going to do is build a trellis going from the outside of this bed over the two beds to the outside of this bed and allow those kiwis to grow up over the trellis so i'm kind of a symmetry person like i would not be growing in rows if it weren't for the fact that I just love and adore symmetry. <laughs> I would just be growing in bed spaces that are all different. Whoa! Uh-oh. I hope that doesn't mean that a turtle was nipping at their toes. And then just feeling frisky because it's warm. You guys all right? Get back to the sh Oh yeah, they're acting like something's... And it could just be fish. But there are turtles galore in this pond, so it does make me nervous because duck feet tend to be a target for snapping turtles. I have not seen snapping turtles, but you see all those turtles basking on the logs across the way. We have plenty of turtles. Okay, sorry, back to the vision here. So, a nice trellis going over this end of the garden. And then, as we walk down to the other end because I adore symmetry so much I want to do another trellis on this end going over the garden and then if I ever get Ryan to build me a door I'm going to use this this was the end of a crib that all four of my children slept in well barely slept in they mostly slept in the toddler bed version of the crib because they always wanted to sleep with mommy so I'm going to have him build a frame around that, and that's going to be my door. And then we'll finish off the fencing that way. So, in his spare time, right? But first off, I need him to get those mini greenhouses built for me. That'll be super cool. The garlic is really growing now that the fence is up and there's nothing coming in to eat the tops off. It's amazing the difference just one little fence can make. I went through and found my little baby fruit plants, other than strawberries. The other ones, the raspberries and mulberries and gooseberries, are all carefully pulled out with a little ring of mulch around them so I'll know where they are. And then as you can see, uh, the comfrey is doing really good. It's coming up all over the garden. Um, what else did we plant in here? The onions didn't fare as well. Um, we have some onions that seem like they survive, but only a few, and I think that's because of this, the moisture. Really, really, really bad moisture. Now this isn't a normal moisture issue in our garden. We don't normally have this high of a rainfall. So this has been a record year. I'm hoping that things will dry out in time for spring to be a mediocre, not overly wet spring. After the ducks went through this bed, I don't think I have anything but radishes. <laughs> From all the things that I seeded, it looks like the radish were the only ones that the ducks didn't enjoy. Oh, wait, there is a mustard. We might have a few things that make it. Oh, there's another mustard. So the ducks didn't get every last seedling. They just got most of them. These carrots are probably actually past the point of wanting to be pulled. Well, yeah, no. There's, they gotta, I feel like they have a good root on them now. The boys absolutely love pulling carrots out, so I will definitely wait till they're out here with me. They're inside working on some school work. Let's see. So what was this bed? This bed, it was, I did it in three sections, and I had radishes in all three. So if that was the mustard, and then we had a kale and um, arugula. That was the other one, wasn't it? So it looks like we have different leaf here. That's not radish. See, the radish has got a furry, I don't know if you can tell. Radish has a very furry leaf and very red stem. This one's a little different. So, and it's the, definitely a seedling because it's got the seed leaf on it. 
I can't tell for sure if that's the arugula or kale. I'm trying to remember which kind of kale it was. That would probably help me. Is that radish? Oh, guys. I really, I really, uh, oh, that looks like kale. No, that's a radish too. Darn it. They look very alike when they're little. <laughs> In case you can't tell. And considering the ducks absolutely adore kale and not so much arugula and mustard, I'm gonna say that that's probably arugula and that all my kale is gone. <laughs> but I'll just have to order some more seed from Baker Creek. There's a lot of seeds that I have given some serious thought to that I think would be absolutely perfect for this year's garden. I guess it's safe to tell you guys my amazing ideas and plans and hopefully you guys can hold me to it. Sometimes I'm afraid to tell you my ideas and plans because I'm afraid that something will happen that will prevent me from following through with it. There are a lot of complications that come up in life in general and I know everybody has their own battles and their own struggles. But there are a few struggles that I have really had to battle with in my life and that I am still battling with that really make it difficult to really make plans and really plan on something and not be afraid. So the two biggest issues in my life still and always have been really are finances and health. Financially, I'm hoping that I can place a Baker Creek seed order with my next YouTube ad revenue check. Now, if I had some more sales going to our Amazon affiliate link and on our Amazon storefront, it might just be enough that I could get a few more packs of seeds. So that's why I always encourage you guys to use those links. It doesn't cost you anything. And it really makes a big difference because we're not just trying to supplement our YouTube or supplement our garden we're trying to feed our family our family to be quite honest with you is considered very low income and we are just trying to do everything we can to keep our dream alive our dream that we can help teach people inspire people and show people that it can be done with a limited income on a small budget and with very little time, because that brings us to the other thing, the health issues. I don't know when I'm gonna have a week that my back goes out, or when I'm gonna have a week where my Hashimoto's flares up and I am unable to get out of the bed or get off the couch. These are realities that I know and I face and I struggle with every day, but every day I wake up and I say, it's going to be a good day and I am going to succeed today. Even if it's just getting up, I know that I've done something good with my day. But when I get to come out here and work in the garden and make videos for you guys to help inspire you and teach you how to live a more sustainable life on a budget, it really fulfills my heart so much. You just don't know. It's always been a dream of mine to make the world a better place. To help people, to inspire people. And I feel like this YouTube channel has given me the opportunity to really potentially reach thousands of people. I just need to get the reach out and touch each one of you so that each one of you are inspired to share and tell people about us, tell people about our journey and share our YouTube with other people so that they can enjoy it as well. So I appreciate every time you share a video or share a link to our channel or tell somebody about us in person. Say, hey, I know this really great channel, Wholesome Roots. They're doing amazing things over there. You should go check them out. So every time somebody comes to me and says, so-and-so told me about you, it just warms my soul. Thank you for all of that. And thank you for every purchase you make on our Amazon affiliate link. I really, truly appreciate it. So, 
my big dream for the garden this year is I'm gonna do a theme garden and Baker Creek is gonna help me get there because Baker Creek has the perfect seeds for this plan. What I wanna do this year is I wanna grow a rainbow of food. I want a rainbow in every food that I grow. I want a rainbow on every plate that I serve my family. The most nutritionally dense food that our family could possibly have is going to include every color of the rainbow. So growing things that come in a variety of colors is going to boost our health on every one of those levels. Not to mention it's going to be pretty beautiful. Not just in the garden, but I keep on picturing these baskets overflowing with multicolored peppers and bountiful colors of the rainbow in my tomatoes and I mean just everything I can I want to grow at least three different colors of and really get a rainbow effect in this garden and in our souls. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that the ducks think it's spring. They're dropping eggs everywhere now. They have made such a bigger range of where they like to go and visit around the pond and around the chickens coops and stuff. It's so funny because I just find eggs everywhere. Ducks are funny like that. They don't really lay in a nest as much as they should. <laughs> Sometimes they do, but oftentimes they just drop them where they are. So even though we may be tempted to start some seeds now because the weather is warm, we may be tempted to get out there in the garden and do things that, like uncovering plants to see, we have to hold back that temptation and we have to be cautious. We have to watch our animals closely. We have to watch our gardens closely because this heat wave is actually kind of a danger to them. The animals' breeding patterns will be thrown off they'll be shedding their coats unnecessarily and parasites are going to be a huge issue many plants that shouldn't be blooming yet are blooming which is going to take away their energy i'm hoping the peach trees don't try to bloom during this because that's oftentimes what happens in georgia and creates a peach shortage we don't need a peach shortage we love our peaches so despite the fact that we're enjoying it right now we have to keep in mind and be realistic and practical and hope that things don't get too hot out here and that the cold weather that's going to follow this won't damage too much but then again there's no reason not to enjoy the blooming daffodils so enjoy it while it lasts and protect your plants and animals from any of those dangers I have pointed out. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.